Um, so this is what the question says. Uh, it says someone was an officer, uh, a lot of extra news information, <laughs> extreme acceleration. Let me just mark it up. Uh, I don't care about the date. Okay. Uh, accelerating from rest. Okay. Some initial speed of zero to a top speed of this. Okay. So some uh, final speed in some amount of time, delta t and was brought jarringly back to rest in only oh let me call this delta t1 and call this uh delta t2 in fact uh, let me get rid of that initial final label instead of call it v1 and v2 because i think i'm gonna be using them in a couple different contexts um <laughs> final isn't always final. Uh, calculate his magnitude of acceleration in his direction of motion. Okay. And yeah. So the picture here is you have something that's uh, moving in a line. So it's a one dimensional motion. Imagine a cart. So at, I don't know, time equals zero. It's at V1 of zero. And it begins to accelerate and uh, reaches some speed. Uh, that I'm gonna call v two at um, this would be at time equals delta t one and um, and uh, I guess there might be some intervening time, but for the sake of simplicity, let's say there isn't. Um, this object as it's moving at v two now, there's something that's uh, stopping it, bringing it to a abrupt stop, and um, so. This is going to come to a stop suddenly and reach a final speed of zero. And the time at which this stop occurs would be if you're counting from zero to delta t1, then this should be additional time of plus delta t2. So they are asking for the acceleration at each of these segments, acceleration during this portion here. And, and in this portion, uh, even though the, the thing is still moving to the right, acceleration will actually be opposing the motion because it's uh, slowing it down. It's uh, reducing the speed. So, um, so in this portion, the, there's a leftward acceleration. That's what part B is asking. Now, as you are reading the question, one keyword I want to bring your attention to is the word magnitude. This is a word we use in connection with the vectors. And it's the word we use when we want to refer to the length of the vector. So by using this word, the question is asking you for the absolute value of the quantity you are asking for. And I get this question about part to be from time to time that why isn't it negative? Well, it's not negative because they asked you to take the absolute value. <laughs> and you know, if we didn't, then you'd have to guess if they wanted a signed answer or an unsigned answer, if a positive and negative is meaningful or not. When they tell you in the question that it's magnitude they are looking for, they are telling you explicitly that we don't care about the sign, just give us the absolute value. So uh, we use the definition of acceleration. We say, okay, acceleration, uh, I guess the average acceleration is the change of velocity over time, rate of change of velocity. So for my A1, it's uh, going to be my change of velocity. That would be my, well, V2, the speed I reach, minus, uh, well, the V1, but that's zero, <laughs> divided by amount of time it takes for the change, delta T1. So I think I can uh, plug in the numbers and uh, do that. I will do that on a calculator all at once. But this is, the, when I get to it, this is the expression I'll be using for A. And for part B, the acceleration opposite to its direction of motion, that's for this part here, the, ch the acceleration will be the change of velocity. So the final speed, zero, minus the speed that he was at at the start of that time period, V2, divided by the amount of time, additional time that's passed, delta T2. And here, again, because the question is asking for magnitude, you want to take the absolute value. And that'll be for my part to be. So I think I have enough to just um, plug in the numbers. So let me just do that. Um, uh, 
Do I have to? No, I don't have to convert any numbers. Good, because <laughs> they are giving me the speed of v2 in meters per second. Good. So a1 would be 282 minus 0 divided by 4.6 seconds. So uh, the acceleration is 61.3 meter per second squared, but they want us to express this in multiples of g, the gravitational acceleration. So the way to get to it is take this number and divide by g, 9.8 meters per second squared. The unit will cancel out, and this is the coefficient that goes in front of g. So 6.26 .6 would be a. Let me just double check. By the way, these multi-part questions, you can do one part at a time. Any blank that you leave blank, uh, the system won't even grade it. That's why you see these. Um, I mean, you know, you have infinite tries, so it doesn't matter. But if it mattered, then it, it uh, now I have uh, 99 attempts left on A and 100 attempts left on B, um, to the extent that it matters. Okay, so for acceleration two, so it's uh, technically speaking zero minus 282, that's the numerator, divided by uh, the time t2, 1.2 seconds. And the, so this is a meter per second squared, divide by g to get, um, so divide by 9.8 meter per second squared to get how many multiples of g this is. And um, this is where, again, remember, magnitude. So no minus sign, just to take the absolute value. 23.98 uh, g is the decelerating acceleration. 23.98. And, uh, you know, this is kind of sign issue is that's uh, the thing that trips up people from time to time. This question, it's uh, meant to be uh, clear, unambiguous. But I will tell you that there are many questions where it is ambiguous, <laughs> whether they want to sign the answer or not. So, um, so that's one of the things that sometimes you will have to try. Like if you put in a negative answer and the system tells you that it's wrong, um, See if uh, they didn't want the minus sign <laughs> or the other way, maybe, you know, different to question, you gave the answer with a positive sign and system didn't want that. And maybe it should be minus. Uh, that's a, really one of the reasons you have so many tries so that if it's a matter of a sign error, um, especially when the question is ambiguous, um, you can just try both ways and see what works.